Beijing is the only city in the world to host the Winter Olympics after hosting Summer Olympics. For the first time, the Winter Olympics will be hosted by a city that previously hosted the Summer Olympics. All preparations have been completed for the Winter Olympics 2022 in a city that hosted the Summer Olympics 2018. Unlike any previous tradition, Beijing National Stadium, which will host the opening and closing ceremonies of Summer Olympics 2018, will be used this time too along events being held in four existing indoor venues that were originally constructed for the 2008 Games. This is the fourth uh, Winter Games in which Pakistan is participating and Pakistan is very actively participate in these games. China se bhi request karte hain ki isme wo aaye aur apni expertise jo hai hamare saath share kare taaki hamare future ke jo winter games hain unme hum actively participate kar sake. And many more are excited to see Beijing. For the first time, a country that is known for its sizzling weather is sending a team to participate in the Winter Olympics. Saudi Arabia, never known for any winter sports and has never participated at an Olympic Winter Games. But in February 2022, a small team of skiers and snowboarders will carry the Saudi flag at the opening ceremony of the Beijing 2022 Olympic Winter Games. It is hoped that the presence of Saudi athletes in Beijing will be a torch bearer for the other Gulf nations too to enter the winter sports arena. The next door neighbor, Iran, is an active participant in winter sports, mainly thanks to its natural advantage of its geography and its contingent in Beijing 2022 also includes a female skiing competitor. Marjan Kalhor was able to break the ice in that society to become the first Iranian woman to participate in Winter Olympics at the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. But the most active player in the winter sports among the Muslim world is Turkey, with a long history of participation in the Winter Olympics followed by Lebanon. Of course, uh, there will be a huge impact in winter sports. It's coming from experience, in fact. There are lots of athletes competing in winter sports, like we have a curling team now, uh, we have a ski jumper, we have a speed skater. Nobody ever heard of those sports. Now we have athletes who are competing in them. Uh, there are youngsters who are doing those sports. Uh, so it's, an, it's a really important example for Turkey and for any country who is hosting those kinds of uh, tournaments. The Winter Olympics 2022 is also the first major international event that will witness extensive participation after the depressing COVID-19 months in the recent past. And there is a sense of excitement to see the world coming back. And it can help promote winter sports in the region in the long run. Sadly, the Beijing Winter Olympics will not be able to promote uh, winter sports or winter games, especially for Southeast Asian nations, and it's due to various reasons. Now, firstly, most athletes uh, representing Southeast Asia are actually based abroad uh, due to lack of facilities in their home nation. And because of this, uh, there will be a sense of uh, the, the, lack, the lacking in a sense of attachment towards the athletes and the sports and these are just some of the very few factors that will dampen any attempts to popularize or even promote winter sports especially in this region. 
But like many occasions in the past, the Western powers have involved politics and sports, and there is a call for the diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics 2022 over the alleged persecution of Muslim minority in Western Xinjiang area, which is not only denied by China, but many Muslim countries too do not acknowledge the US claims over the mistreatment of Uyghurs. On China, they use the Xinjiang card, the Tibet card, Hong Kong issue. So these are all based on double standards. These are nothing to do with human rights, nothing to do with democracy. And especially we feel in the Beijing Olympics, in which Pakistan and so many other countries will participate fully, we feel that this is totally unnecessary. And the US should learn from history. It was ping pong diplomacy under President Nixon an American president, which opened the doors to China. Sports is something which is uniting people, irrespective of color, irrespective of politics, irrespective of religion, irrespective of nationality. So this event should be participated because we are facing challenges like coronavirus, climate change. We need collective efforts for a common purpose not cleavages, not conflict, not confrontation. Even the facts presented by a few in the West related to progress, developments and modernization in Muslim areas of China are not correct. West is uh, playing uh, American game and there are uh, uh, dual standards and hypocrisy uh, in uh, re clearly reflecting from this decision. Uh, because every country has its own issues. If you are raising the issues uh, regarding uh, minorities in China, there are issues relating uh, to every European countries and Americans' attitude toward uh, third world countries. So there are, there are the issues that uh, uh, reciprocal uh, steps may be taken by rest of the world. So, so I uh, clearly think that uh, uh, that should not be an appropriate strategy. And being a Pakistani, because this is the area, this is the region, and we are linked in, uh, with China, uh, and if they boycott on diplomatic front, uh, Pakistan will also be affected. Uh, in my opinion, West should avoid such notion. The Western powers have developed a habit of linking politics with sports, which might support their international political agendas, but will surely damage the overall cordial atmosphere of the Olympics and the sportsman spirit among the athletes.